as a young child, I had hoped that I would have been a mainstream actress in Hollywood. And I used to dance around in front of the cushions and teddy bears and pretend that, yes, I'm gonna make it. And my sister had bought me a keyboard and I used to just be banging away on it. And I used to pretend, 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 pretend. And I was an athlete and I was pretty petite and I was really physically fit all through my life I was very well <coughs> apart from the fact of having asthma and then um, about 2000 to 2001 I was struck down with a stroke and my kidneys collapsed and then I was diagnosed with lupus disease which um, mortified me to be honest with you I was in such a state my family were around me and I almost died and I was so 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 crushed and I knew that in my physical condition that what I wanted to become was now over and done with and it had gone and to be honest with you even though I continued to try to teach some of the young children in Newham in various schools and I used to put on productions in Hackney Empire and Stratford Theatre Royal. I still continue to be within the arts even though what I wanted to do for myself didn't come to pass. I, my part of my dream was gone but I said I can still utilise my gifts and my talents and I had every I wasn't going to give up and I was still writing and composing my poems, my songs, my plays and my films and everything and I said there's no reason why I should even when I've been hospitalised not give up even if I'm wired up to machines but to be honest with you I was hurt. So Alan how long have you known me? 31 years. Wow Alan already. Yes. Very, That's a long yeah, time. Very, very long time yeah. And in that length of time, how do you feel that you helped me? I helped you when you was a, a little girl, um, supported you, came to my home, looked after you, um, and, and helped you with prayer um, and support. Yes. And you used to take me to your favourite time. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's been a long time, you know, but um, yeah, it's all good. And she's a fantastic girl. Yeah, and also, <laughs> yeah, also the bass. Yeah, the bass. <laughs> <laughs> On the music, yeah, stuff. yeah. Regarding my diagnosis, when I told you about it, I found it really helpful that you told me that your niece was also diagnosed mm -hmm. with lupus mm -hmm. and. I really do appreciate the help that you helped me with that. How do you feel that you helped me with getting me in contact with your niece, Kelly? Um, I've helped you, first of all, um, to when you had the diagnosis, I was in and out of the hospital with you mm -hmm. just to help you and support you. I know it's not a very um, nice illness, but. Um, I helped you regarding through prayer and support, come to the hospital and and um, seeing my niece go through the same situation, same diagnosis is very, very hard and um, and I, I just want to be there for you and I've been there for you anytime you wanted to call me and um, and to um, take you to the hospital, I was there and, and, and I will always support you no matter what. I would like to say also, there have been times when I've been at home on my own and there's not always people I can call and no matter what time of the day or night, I always feel that I can contact you. Yes. And there's not any and anybody that I can feel to contact and you are always there. You will come to the hospital, you will come to my home, pray with me, stay at my home and just 
protect me, bring bring things for me. Mm -hmm. And for me, that means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to start crying, but there's not a lot of people who are genuine in this world. And and that won't go over and beyond. Mm -hmm. And for you to do that for me is amazing. And I just really thank you thank so, you. so much. Well, you will always be number one. You will always be my daughter. And um, wherever you decide to go in the future, with a career that you're going to do, I will be there for you and support you in your career. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. So Asha, how long have you known me? Um, I've known you for about, I'd say, I think like 12 to 14 years. It's been a while during yeah. that time, yeah. Roughly about that. And we met during uh, Sardines, the musical, yeah. yeah. It, was, um, it was a good time. It was yeah. fantastic. I had a great time during the musical. It was an experience. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of laughs, a lot of like a cries. And, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's definitely something that I'll always remember. Yeah. Mm. We've been close since then. Yeah. Yeah. Best friends ever since. Exactly. Yeah. You've come and you've supported me from the hospital visits, all of my family events, my barbecues. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're all good times. Yeah. All of my barbecues. Oh, even my nephew's growing up you've come to all of my yeah. family events and that's what we do family best friends i know you've been such a great source of encouragement and my last event this is my book launch after all these years it's finally happened yeah i'm so happy about that i'm really happy for you I deserve it Good. And now you're featuring in my documentary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, babe. And after this, you can feature in my films. <laughs> yeah, my musicals. <laughs> yeah. And my music videos. Yes, definitely. And so forth, so forth. Yeah, I'm there for you always, you know that. One of my best friends, Asha. She says, Kay, I'm going to stay with you until you press the lifeline, until you call the ambulance, and I'm coming with you to the hospital to make sure you go to the hospital. Yeah, and I'm there for you too, it's not just about me, it's about you. And you get married and you have your 101 children, which I can't <laughs> wait to look at. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's about both of us. So I just wanted to say thank you for all of the support that you've given to me over the years, to be honest with you. You know, I haven't always been easy, you know, you know my mood swings with this illness and my highs and my lows, my super hyperactive moments and then my down in the valley when I get crazy and <laughs> mad and you know <laughs> crazy texts and crazy messages and stuff like that but <laughs> for it all you know you supported me and I'm gonna say it more so than some people who are me closer to me and sometimes that's hard because I'm thinking to myself how is it some outsiders can support me more so than the insiders and I'm just keeping it real in this documentary and I'm just saying that there are some really genuine loving people and for me to know you via musical and up to this day you're still loving me caring for me and supporting me means so much to me and I'd just like to say thank you so much for being there for me for the good times and the bad times and I'm looking forward to our future together and us having a mainstream holiday together yes, because yes, definitely. we've done the theme parks We've done. We've travelled England. Yeah, no. we've done all over England. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we've done theatres, cinemas, dinners, yeah. but we've not done an international holiday. Yeah. We've even got stuck on the motorway. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. Yes. but never trying done to a get holiday. back to London. Yeah, crying and you've done good. You've done very good. Yeah, <laughs> we've had some experiences. Yeah. Get the park out. Oh god, all in the afternoon. Yeah, all got towns. back to London about four in the morning. Yeah, yeah we went to Cambridge. No, wait, 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 was it Cambridge? Yeah, we went to Cambridge. Yeah. We've gone to Alton Towers, yes. done Blackpool. Yeah. 
um, in Birmingham. Birmingham, Stratford upon Avon. Yes, we've done um, Hamlet. Yeah, we've done Hamlet. Yes. yes. We've just got to do Manchester. Yeah. Oh, we yes. To, yeah, we've yeah, got to do yeah, Manchester. Yeah. Got to do Manchester. And, then, and then International Holiday. Yes. Do a and music video. A music video. And your film. <laughs> and oh, yes, yes, and your film. Yes. 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 And that's yeah. it. So, thank you for everything. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Beverly has been my patient for the last 35 years. In spite of all the disabilities, she has been an inspiration to all the patients in the surgery with disabilities. I'm sure she has been an asset to our surgery and I wish her all the luck in the future. And I'd like to thank you very much for being my GP and you and Dr. K and Dr. Memon has looked after me and has really helped me along my way. And I have had numerous problems along with my disability, but I aim to want to help many, many um, people, patients with disabilities and I really thank you for being a phenomenal and excellent doctor so I really thank you for always seeing me at the last minute all the time you would be like just come in come in come in just bring her in bring her in come in and uh, so thank you so much for being an excellent and thank you I wish you all the best in the future thank you so Today, today is the 23rd of June 2019. Um, I've had a wonderful sleep. Um, I was in a lot of pain. I stayed up working a lot last night and I fell asleep about six o'clock, six, between six and seven this morning, doing some work and making my list for the week ahead because last week's schedule was completely out of the window. I'm really blessed today to have with me one of my good sisters and prayer intercessory partners, Tong, with me. I'm so ever grateful that she's not only come to visit me and spend some good quality time with me to, in prayer and just just... Just to have her company, and every time, sometimes she comes down to visit, I might, we always end up missing each other if I'm away or whatever it may be. But um, this time, it's a mighty blessing that I've been discharged. What day is it? It's a Sunday. I was discharged Friday night from the Royal London Hospital. And then. Yesterday I had to go back because they forgot to give me all of my medication and then I spoke to the sister and then some of my prescriptions still hasn't um, all been gathered together but I'm the video I made on Friday in all honesty was it was accurate and but some parts of it was quite painful but Tong brought something up for me today because she could she bless her she brought a take she brought takeaway for me here she was gonna she came here she was gonna cook but for some for her situation she wasn't hasn't been able to be able to cook for me today so was, closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly so, so now she in the end now she she brought to take away well she had noticed something because my hand is still it still hasn't come back together it's still malfunctioning like yeah like robotic so she could see me struggling <laughs> to try to eat my food which somehow can't get to see <laughs> yeah right so she bless her so she, yeah so that's it yeah there Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully sure. they got to see that. <laughs> yes, maybe the camera. No, no, no. Somehow, anyway. Well, she saw me trying struggling to see. So yeah, that's it. That's all we needed to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> Assistant. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So she said, "Would, would you like me to feed you?" 
So I burst out laughing. But under normal circumstances, I didn't. I had to laugh. But if you listen back to my video on Friday, that is actually where I snapped and broke because that's the part that became emotional for me because when I said it that um, I didn't think that at my age that somebody would have to come actually have to help me to eat so she was mixing my food hold this please yeah she was mixing up my food together and um stuff for me to be able to eat and i just yeah she had to mix it because she could just see poor thing because i couldn't hold the container with my right hand to fix stay it here before the tissue was here it was like this okay so let me demonstrate so as I was eating, this is what was happening. I wasn't trying to show off because she's oriental, so I was trying to play like, oh, I can have it eat with the chopsticks, eat with chopsticks. So no, I was, I was eating with a fork with my left hand because my right hand was so much in pain. So it was just like, <laughs> I couldn't get a grip. And this is what I'm trying to say don't take things for granted and she looked over and she could see that i was struggling and actually it wasn't even let's do it what how it originally was tom wasn't it, it was yes, with the plastic, plastic <laughs> <laughs> we've <laughs> we've just changed by having this it it was with this one so i would go in <laughs> so you can only imagine it was far worse because we i didn't want the plastic <laughs> um I didn't want the plastic fork to snap and she was just trying to um, say we were eating out of the container because she to, to help so that there won't have to be any washing up <laughs> <laughs> she's leaving me and going back to Cambridge <laughs> The, the government has taken away my care package, so I'm back to having to struggle on my own. So, yeah. Um, it's a hard world, I tell you. Just the smallest things that we take for granted. I just want people to know that sometimes, sometimes, right, we, I just think, just me having that small chart, trying to eat. I'm thinking some people don't have hands. Some people might have one arm or one hand. I, and I was just struggling. And now, to be honest with you, because I'm a little bit upset, I've lost my appetite. And I hadn't eaten for the whole day because I was in, I've been in so much pain. I've they've put me on a new um painkiller from the hospital to, to kill off the, to help with the pain but the problem i have is this particular pain um medication it helps with the pain but it makes me really sleepy and drowsy so um tongue you've got any words sweetheart to say mm -hmm. Just like when you say <coughs> don't take granted, I really agree with you. And so when we are healthy or sometimes we always think that when we see others people not well and then we think mm, never think that that would be us mm. in that situation. So I was thinking of if one day that's happened to me what what would it be? Of course, I don't want this to happen, but we don't know, you know. But the thing is, um, God is great, and yes, He's faithful, and He's merciful. So, <coughs> regardless of what happened, He said that He never leave us nor forsaken us. Yeah. 
that's very comforting. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And remember also, I was saying to you that um, when, when we grow up, yeah. when we, when I, you know, when you grow, you know, growing up, when in growing up, um, as a young child, what they do, you know, they say, oh, you can be this and you grow up, da -da -this. And, yes. and in my mind, you have, your dream just to make you go you go out you go to school go to college you go to maybe go into university get that job get married have your children you never believe and think that you're the one that's gonna be sick or they never even even say there's a possibility of you being the one that something detrimental is going to happen to you you just don't think that no you don't you 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 really do believe from primary school that everything's gonna go hunky-dory in your life <laughs> and because i was so healthy and i was an athlete and why like, there's no way that something is gonna happen you just you, you just don't think it yes sure you don't think yes, it, you know, you yes. just always think that's going to happen. Maybe that's going to happen to the other person or you look around and you're thinking, yeah, maybe that's going out to that person or that person or that person. But don't for one minute think that you're exempt mm. at any age and don't think that you're going to die and don't think that you're going to die an old person or get sick at an at old age because it can hit you and come tapping at your door yes. at any time you know and Tong I'm, I'm so grateful every time I see you you lift me up and <laughs> you brighten, brighten me up you lift you know like I met you a month ago and being with you and love coming to Cambridge and spending time with you and I never ever want to leave look how late I left in Cambridge the last time and I'm so grateful for that uh, little intercessory prayer partner that you mm. Sue and I have it's wonderful yes. it's beautiful and you're such a wonderful friend and you always got to even mum and myself Hmm. I mean, you're a great uh, intercessor too. You've been blessing to all of us, you know, and your prayer is really powerful, really anointed. When you pray for me and in my house, you know, I can really sense God's tangible presence was there. A really, really powerful anointing. Yes. And it's just like you just speaking to the deep in my heart what I needed to pray for, and I didn't really kind of like share too much detail into you oh, yeah it was really really encouraging so i said that well done you know it's really from god that use you as a um, blessing to me yeah well i just bless the lord that i'm here on this earth yeah. for something good of course and not just something, <laughs> something not tangible. just something but a lot of things you don't know you even don't know a lot of lot of, and you have blessed a lot of people you know, I'm not just saying to make you happy, seriously, it's just like, I think you ought to know, but maybe people, they don't let you know. Or maybe they didn't uh, give you feedback about your prayer or didn't give you any, um, but somehow, yes, somehow, somehow yeah, yes, somehow. but I really, I think you need to know, it's from my personal uh, experience that while well, you pray for me, you know, and pray for Sue, you know, on the phone, it's really powerful. I'm just I'm thankful honestly that the Holy Spirit can even use me yeah. mm. even he can use me even when I'm in pain or suffering I am I'm, yeah. I'm thankful that he is letting me know that I haven't left you yes Lean, I haven't left you even though you might be in a bad way mm. that I haven't left you at all because I no. tell you it's, it's, it can be very lonely and that's why I said to you when I mentioned to you in the um, when I mentioned to you and so in the message that I feel sometimes my prayers are not answered I I actually meant 
some of my own personal prayers. I didn't, yes, I know. Yeah, yeah. it yes, wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. I wasn't meaning that Abba Father doesn't answer my prayers because I've seen so mm. many people's prayers being. But answered. your prayer has not been answered. Your personal prayer has not been answered. I think delaying means doesn't mean that denial. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Maybe it's just on the timing, or you know, as I have test you on the WhatsApp. Yeah, if it's God's will and it's just about timing, yeah, I know that it become an intercessor is also quite. Um, he has to go through a lot of trial as well. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's why I didn't want to have that mantle when I said that to my mum when she said that this is one of the men the Lord Holy Spirit taught, said that for you to carry on this mantle years ago when she mentioned that to me. Mm -hmm. I said, oh no, I'm not taking this call. Yeah. I said, I'll see what you intercessors go through. I said, I don't want it. No, thank you. You literally have to be sitting on Abba Father's lap constantly, <laughs> every single day, every moment. Yeah. I said, you get beyond the fiery darts of the enemy. Right. I said, he doesn't leave you guys alone. <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. I said then it was confirmed via two to three other people and I'm like oh, no. mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in for a nice treat on planet earth <laughs> so yeah um I just wanted to do this little mini video clip because of the dinner situation <laughs> with the one hand one hand <laughs> but I wanted Tong in my video because she is so special I love this woman I love, oh. I love her so dearly <laughs> we love you, know? you I love her so dearly her and Sue so 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 much you will never know like 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 having her and um Having her into my life, and you know that's why I love the Lord because He is not a god of one particular color. Hello, Him. That's why He made a rainbow of many colors. <laughs> Look at us. We're yeah. United Colors of Benetton. <laughs> 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 Look, and you know what? We are actually blood sisters. Why? Mm. Through the blood of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> yes. And you know, that makes us connected as one. And it's amazing. China, Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> Meet in England. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How awesome is our God? <laughs> yes, he's awesome. You know, so yeah. And mm. she always comes and puts a great smile on my face. Every time we meet. I'm going to see you more often, Tom. Yes, coming. Even my mum, my mum, when when she's you and Sue, what, remember we used to be in this circle here. Yeah. We used to, of, of, um, I think it was four of us then. Yeah, four. Yes, four. Including yes. Squidgy, who used to want to be in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then to be, we used to pray. By the way, Squidgy is, uh, is Kathleen's so cat. Yeah, Squidgy yeah. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we used to be in the middle here praying and just bringing up essence of praise and worship to the lord and just filling this home with his holy presence and, and he used to fill it with his holy presence mm. and leave it anointed and and now it's you know it's sued in one hospital i was in another hospital but i'm now home and um yeah but the holy spirit's ever present it's i just about, wanted to say that yeah God brought us together as a purpose. Yeah, he yes. Does. And really grateful for your friendship mm. and for your trust. Yes, and then um, you have uh, been a great blessing to all of us as well. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. You're amazing. Thank you. <laughs> My little Christian octopus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> she called me octopus. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's Tom's new name now. She's here, there, and my everywhere. Nickname. I can't get her to settle down. I can't pin her down anymore. <laughs> Before I could get her moment, I could get a moment with her. Now she's like, pew, 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 pew. pew. I'm like, Tom, where are you? So huh, she can't get her in text sometimes. She got a message on her. She, she's like, quick. She's like half getting ready whilst get, <laughs> putting on a helmet to, to be on her way to work. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get you on my break. But I'm so grateful, Anna. and there's other things that I'm so grateful that I know the Lord's going to do some mighty, wonderful things in her life this year. Because Tong, this is our year. Amen. We yes. said it, didn't we? Yes. We said Tong, this is our year. This is Jesus our year in Jesus' name. name. We declare it. We declare yes. it. Yes. <laughs> it is. It's our year in Jesus' mm. name. <laughs> uh, okay so thanks for listening everybody and i just wanted to share that so please be patient and try have to hope yeah have always hope. have hope yeah and have faith god is looking for the faith mm. hebrew 11 is the faith yes and today i also would like to share a little bit like um, you know peter went to fish for he's a skilled fisherman but then he couldn't fish at all. And Jesus just said that, put your net on the right. So he just, he didn't ask why. He doesn't ask Charlie, but he put this action into mm. faith plus action is the result of God, God's act. Mm. So have hope, Amen. have faith in him because he never change. And today, counseling this situation, we're hopeful, hopefully be uh, encouraging for you that she can make it by God's grace and you can too if you have this same seeming mm. stipulation. Amen. Because God is good. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Love. God bless you. God bless, bless you. you. Mm. Thank you. I flew all the way over because I love them not so much and they looked after me from America. So I said, I'm getting on a flight from the UK to Barcelona to see him because we never know. I'm happy to see you. America. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. The Megat family. Hey, it's Jamal coming at you like I'm about to enter the NBA draft. <laughs> no, but um, I've known Cat. I should say Kathleen, but I call her Cat. Um, for at least 15 years or more. That I know for a fact. I can't give you an exact number, but I've known her for. Like I said, at least over 15 years. Um, we met on Black Voices, which was an alternative to Black Planet at the time. And uh, just would chat, have conversation, and the friendship blossomed from there. Um, she would always tell me she was always in the States. You know, I, I didn't believe her. You know, when people live in different parts of the world, you don't think they travel like that. But lo and behold, she definitely travels quite a bit extens extensively if i don't say so myself um she's always in the states so she said she was in florida and one day she called me up and said i'm in florida i'm gonna come up to atlanta and i was like cool and we hung out my family loved her they loved her accent of course um and yeah ever since then it's now 2020 and here we are friends great friends um the distance hasn't really proven to be a disruptor um she didn't tell me about lupus when we first met she probably told me i would say a year or two after we met and um when we did meet, she had no choice but to tell me because I knew something was wrong um, because she was taking steroids. And then she told me, you know, and um, I, I I knew of a couple of people who had lupus, like t Boz. I don't know. I don't you know. I take that back. I, I think t Boz does have lupus or is it sick or so. Either way, um, I knew a couple of people who had lupus, but they never had any, I guess, outbreaks. 
so I guess it was considered inactive. Um, I don't know the, the, the correct terminology, but so I had an understanding of what lupus was, but I didn't know the um, effects on the body that it had and, and the mind mentally. Um, and I still didn't know until, believe it or not, 2019, when I went to her fundraiser in um, London and she showed the videos, I had no idea that she went through the ordeals that she went through when she had the episodes of lupus wreaking havoc on her internally. Um, yeah, it was definitely an eye opener. If that's the word I'm looking for, I don't think it is, but it definitely was an eye opener for me. I think it was for my mother. Um, and I have tried to give her, I won't say advice, but links uh, to people with lupus and how they're coping and dealing with living with lupus um, in regards to the eating habits. I do know fried food is, you know, a no-no, should be avoided at all costs, but I understand, you know, that things that taste good are very hard to leave alone. I know that firsthand. Um, and knowing Kat, she probably did abide by the guidelines, but of course, as a human being and how she is, you know, she likes to eat. She loves good food. I know that about her for sure. Um, thank you for the Turkish restaurant in London. Bomb. That's all I can say. Um, again, I think after all these years, the fact that she's still standing is a testament to her will and her drive and love for life. And I'm expecting many, 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 many more years that we can share together as friends. And I will definitely be back to London you can count on that. But um, with this coronavirus outbreak, hmm, we're gonna put that on hold. Love you. So Kathleen, you're going to kind of talk to us about um, lupus, want some more information. But actually, last time you were here in 2017, um, you were here, well, not to talk about lupus, but it's because of lupus that certain things have happened. So do you wanna share a bit about that? Um, yeah, just tell us a bit about lupus and what it means, what it is and everything. Well, um, I first was diagnosed with lupus at the age of 24. Um, I was diagnosed with a stroke and had kidney damage. I was on the way to the hospital. I didn't know I was really sick. My hair fell out, I had um, blue fingertips. I'd lost a lot of weight, and I was going about my daily life really, and I just became really critically sick, and I was vomiting and dying for three weeks, and um, my mum and my brother and his partner at the time, they couldn't take it anymore, so they rushed me to hospital. And it was then I was just really sick, they kept me in, in the Royal London Hospital for one month. And they did numerous tests on me, had MRI scan, kidney biopsy, lumbar puncture. And it was then after being in hospital for a whole month that they actually diagnosed me. Um, they diagnosed me with lupus disease then, but when they saw uh, all the clots and the strokes on the brain, they said, if you'd have stayed home for one more day, we don't know how you actually made it really, because with all the strokes, you would have died of a massive brain hemorrhage with all the clots that was on your brain. They said, you're a miracle, really, you really are. So, yeah. Wow. So, 2017, breaking the blood ceiling, it was because of the alopecia. That's why you were uh, on the panel of women. Yeah. So, we had a panel of women that, um, yeah, that were suffering from alopecia for different reasons. And so, um, yeah, so that, that's why you came to speak about that, but not necessarily about the lupus. So, 
um, yeah, just honoured to have you back as well to kind of explain and, and talk to us in, in a bit more detail about lupus and everything. And is it, is it, um, uh, is it something that affects more black people? Like, what, what or is it anyone? In... Well, originally, it appeared to have been, um, it, it seemed to have affected mostly um, Afro-Caribbean women, but I've been in the hospital since then with all different ethnic origins, you know, and I've been the man so many different types, and I was like, oh wow, so now it's become such so widespread, all different, different, you know, Caucasians, Asians, and you'd be surprised. Now it's just, you know, it's like the growing cancer. <laughs> yeah, it's just, and, and men as well, so you think it's just women, but it's not, you know. Um, one of the Sunday school te um, children I used to teach, um, Sean, he passed away two years ago. He passed away with it because it can actually turn into cancer cells. So that can it can take you out with it with that via that route as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And what are the things that you're dealing with day to day um, having lupus? On a day to day, I can be extremely fatigued. Um, I get really sharp pains around the body. Um, um, it can attack the brain. So, sorry everyone, today I'm a bit emotional today because today I'm in a little bit of pain. Um, but I wanted to come out to do this for Tash. Um, and I just wanted to do this because it means so much to me to inspire people because they really have no idea how this illness can just affect you from one day to the next. You know, you can be looking so well and can be so vibrant and you have no idea. It can just attack your organs as and when, you know, and it can just take you out just like that or you can just have it under control. And with me, it's attacked for all of my organs now, you know, it's just eating away my insides, it's attacked my outsides. I've had to really work on my skin. So yes, inside and out. So when you came in today, you said your body was hurting and, and was it your, your uncle that helped? Yeah. Um, was it massage? Yeah, Is it, it was massage. My shoulders this morning. And that's something that people with lupus has because you said that's you offer that treatment. So tell me a bit yeah. about that treatment. You can get um, muscular pains um, and joint swelling and everything. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm a qualified therapist, um, but sometimes I can't always do treatments, but I love to offer treatments because I know how it can sometimes help with their self-esteem. I know how it can help to heal the body and just to make one feel really good within themselves, you know? So yeah, I do combinations. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so your mum was your main carer, wasn't she? Yeah. yeah. I had, yeah, I had carers, but she was my main one, yeah. Yeah. And what, what would she need to do for you? What, what did you need her for? Well, sometimes um, if I was really sick and I wouldn't get out of bed, she would bring me food and she would sometimes make me eat because I wouldn't want to eat, I, you know, so she would come and she would just rub me down and anoint me with oil and pray over me. She would always come to the hospital with me. And when I had to press my lifeline, because I've got a lifeline at home, she would... Um, be there with the ambulance to bring them in to make sure that they come in and take me on the stretcher and everything. So she was always there for that and she'd always be in my room and at the hospital. So she'd always be there just to maybe support and look after me, feed me sometimes, to have to wash me as well sometimes. Mm. And, and what was it last year or two years ago? No, she, this year, uh, this year was going to be three years since she passed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, she. Yeah. yeah. So, so now she's passed away. How is life like for you now? It's tough. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm not really the same because you know you get by, you get on. It was until last year I said to myself, you know what? I as much as she's gone, life has to go on. And 
it's not a case of me sitting down moping. I'm one of these people, I don't like to sit down and mope for long. I will get up and get on with it. So I just decided enough is enough. I wrote my book last year. I did my EP last year. I had a major event last year. And I've just finished my first episode of my documentary. And I said, I'm just going to get up and get on with it because I know that's what she would want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so I'm glad you went there because uh, I was just going to say, like, despite everything that you go through, you've gone through and continue to go through, that you have uh, recorded an EP. So for those of you that don't know, it is, it's like a few songs uh, short of an album. So um, you recorded a yeah. couple of tracks, and um, and you wrote them as well, right? Yeah. So you wrote them, and then you went to the recording studio, recorded it with Paul Watson. Paul. Is he still at the back? Yeah, yeah Paul Watson. Um, and also you wrote a book, and is that the book that's yeah. at the back? The she also wrote a book as well. Um, and what else did you do? I so just finished episode one of my documentary yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. And I'm also, I finished my musical, which I'm going mm -hmm. to be doing the musical. Whoever wants to be involved with that, I'm going to be doing all auditions for that soon for this year. So it's a, a main musical. This is a main musical. I wrote it whilst I was in the hospital over the years with all the people who I was in hospital with. So I'm just, and then I'm going to turn it into a film as well. So it's going to be in a musical and then I'm going to turn it into a film. So, so this is, yeah, exactly. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. Amazing. So no matter what's happening with your body, like you're still pushing forward, you're still going for it, you're still living out your dreams, no matter how much your body may be in pain, but like, for me, that is very inspirational, you know, um, it, it's funny because sometimes when we talk or message each other, it's just like, I'm sorry darling, I, I, I forget sometimes what I've already said, like, you know, but still, you still carry on and still push forwards and everything. Which is awesome, no matter how you might be might be feeling inside. Um, so yeah, so you're going to be sharing with us a poem, and then after that, a song. Yeah, if, if you're up for that. Yeah, does that sound good? Yeah. yeah? Okay. So um, I think we should get right on it. Yeah. Let's yeah? so start with the poem first. Please. No weapon formed against me will prosper, and every lying tongue that rises up against me will fall to the ground. I may have once been lost, but praise Jesus, now I'm found. You laugh, you mock, you ridicule me. You think that's the way it's supposed to be. But this light inside, you will surely see. And one day, I will be set free. Lupus is a disease that doesn't belong in my life. It's a test to see how I can get through, even though things cut like a light knife. There's no way I will remain this way forever. One day, one day, my life will all come together. Being set apart, days being lonely and sad, I believe one day that Yahweh and real friends will make me glad just to know I had the genuine touch from the true, the loving, the pure and righteous. But everyone has their time here on earth. A new chapter has been created in me, a brand new birth. Yes, I may have been severely ill with this illness before, but things can change around in life, that's for sure. Creating me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and start me anew. Gather together the faithful few. Clear away the fake with one quick take. Help me to know from you who was ordained. From the beginning of time, the ones that were predestined. We are extremely precious in every way. Try to be reminded of that every single day. So this song's dedicated to you and to me. It's for all of us.
Well, my book is out now called A Rise Above. It's out on Amazon. And in December, I will have my album out, which is also called A Rise Above, followed by next year, my musical play, The Journey, and then followed by my film. And my music videos will be out. So look out, everybody, and watch out for that. Thank you. Followed by my documentary which is what we're doing now. Thank you. 